Now, I imagine a boardroom in the city of London. I'm guessing you've now got a, a mental picture, probably largely, of men. Well, a report from MPs today says a lack of women on the boards of city firms may have made the financial crisis worse. Let's talk to Venetia Thompson, who used to work in the Square Mile, wrote a book about her experiences, and Dr Fiona Moore, who lectures on human resources. Venetia, uh, what, what is your impression of, of the city as it is now, 2010? Is it, is it as depicted, this place where women are treated in a way that possibly wouldn't be accepted anywhere else? Uh, possibly. I mean, it depends how you, how you look at it. Uh, it's a very difficult environment to work in for everyone, male, female. It's, it's tough. It, it's never been anything other than tough, and it's got worse uh, during the recession. People aren't making money, people are unhappy, therefore banter has increased. Um, the sexist banter has probably increased as a result. Um, and no, I mean, of course, it's a, it's a difficult environment. So what's the choice for a woman uh, trying to work in the city? Is it to uh, simply emulate the men or is it to try to fly the flag for their own way of doing things? Uh, I very much took on um, the role of, of emulating the men to a certain extent. I mean, I sort of retained some of my femininity, but I was very much aware that um, I wanted to be treated completely as an equal um, and, and, and accepted um, by them. And so I very much decided, OK, um, I will continue uh, as I always have done and wh I won't use my, my sex to, to change. Um, no, to but in terms of sort of the aggression and the kind of testosterone fueled ambition mm -hmm. and, you know, it's every man for himself and trample on the fingers on the rungs below you, that kind of approach, did you feel that you had to adopt that too? I'm not sure I felt I had to, but I certainly did. And I became as aggressive and, and as uh, explosive on, on the trading floor as the men were. Um, so the idea that women are, are somehow more rational and less prone to, um, to crazy risk-taking is, is a little bit strange to me because I was probably as bad as the men. Uh, Dr Moore, the, the Venetia's sort of outlined that her view of that was that this is a very, this is a hothouse environment, mm -hmm. you know, a, a very difficult working environment. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of other though very difficult, stressful working environments where, if you like, may have been forced to, but they kind of had to change the way mm -hmm. things are, uh, women are treated and, and their role in the workplace. Is the city somehow different? Has it been left behind? Well, I would say the city does have a certain amount of catching up to do. For instance, retail is in many ways also a fairly high pressure environment, particularly when you're uh, getting to the global level, and yet there are quite a lot of women uh, at high levels in retail. Similarly, there have been strides in IT in uh, getting more women at higher levels, and uh, it uh, seems to me that um, you know, a um, high-stress culture does not necessarily lead to a uh, fairly masculine approach. Would it be a better place were there more women there? This seems to be the fundamental suggestion that, that for example, the financial crisis we've mm -hmm. just been through would have been eased. Well, that's a bit of a controversial uh, question because, you know, so would it be better? Well, no. As you say, women are human beings. But uh, I do feel that banks are missing out by effectively uh, not representing 50% of the population. If you think about it, women are financial consumers too. Uh, in many parts of the UK, women um, are effectively controlling the household finances, especially in the recession. Who's going to decide where to put your money? And if you're not thinking of what women want, um, and you aren't if you don't uh, have women uh, represented at the top levels, then you're missing out. I, I was going to ask Venetia whether if she had her time again, she would behave the same way. Uh, yes, I mean, I, that's how I survived, and, and that's how I had to to pay in order to survive, um, it, you know, that's how I felt I had to pay. So I, uh, no, absolutely, I, I do everything in exactly the same way and, and um, perhaps a little less excessively and I would have burnt out um, in maybe a couple of years as opposed to sort of 14 months. But um, it's certainly not a sustainable lifestyle for anyone and men perhaps survive better in the same way men would do um, on the front line. <laughs> uh, but it's that sort of environment, it's, it's, it's very difficult. Well, the pressures we face here are time, mainly. Yes. And uh, we're done for time right now. I think we're going to be talking about it uh, more a little later. Yeah. Thank you yeah. both very much this Thank morning. You. Uh, you're watching Breakfast. We're about to leave viewers on BBC One. We continue on the BBC News Channel. We'll, we'll be you. chatting about the availability of cancer drugs for NHS patients in England. The Conservatives say too many new medicines are being turned down. Stay with us. The battle for pole commences next on BBC One with qualifying for the Malaysian Grand Prix.